Saint Augustine, the Harmony of the Gospels, Book 1, Chapter 2, on the order of the evangelists and the principles on which they wrote. Now those four evangelists, whose names have gained the most remarkable circulation of the whole world, and whose number has been fixed as four, it may be for the simple reason that there are four divisions of that world through the universal length of which they, by their number, as by a kind of mystical sign, indicated the advancing extension of the Church of Christ. I believe to have written in the order which follows, first Matthew, then Mark, thirdly Luke, lastly John. Hence, too, it would appear that these had one order determined among them with regard to the matters of their personal knowledge and their preaching of the gospel, but, if, but a different order in reference to the task of giving the written narrative. As far, indeed, as concerns the acquisition of their own knowledge and the charge of preaching, those unquestionably came first in order who were actually followers of the Lord when he was present in the flesh and who heard him speak and saw him act and with the commission received from his lips they were dispatched, dispatched to preach the gospel. But as respects the task of composing that record of the gospel which is to be accepted as ordained by divine authority. There were only two, belonging to the number of those whom the Lord chose before the Passover, that obtained places, namely the first place and the last. For the first place in order was held by Matthew, and the last by John. And thus, the remaining two who did not belong to the number referred to, but who, at the same time had become followers of the Christ who spoke in these others, were supported on either side by the same, like sons who were to be embraced, and who in this way were set in the midst between these twi twi twine. Of these four, it is true, only Matthew is reckoned to have written in the Hebrew language, the others in Greek, and however they may appear to have kept each of them a certain order of narration proper to himself, this certainly is not to be taken as if each individual writer chose to write in ignorance of what his predecessor had done, or left out as matters about which there was no information things which another nevertheless is discovered to have recorded. But the fact is that just as they received each of them the gift of inspiration, they abstained from adding to their several labors any superfluous conjoint compositions. For Matthew is understood to have taken it in hand to construct the record of the incarnation of the Lord according to the royal lineage and to give an account of most part of his deeds and words as they stood in relation to this present life of man. Mark follows him closely and looks like his attendant and epitomizer, for in his narrative he gives nothing in concert with John apart from the others. By himself separately he has little to record, in conjunction with Luke, as distinguished from the rest, he has still less. But in concord with Matthew, he was a very large number, he has a very large number of passages. Much too, he narrates in words almost numerically and identically the same as those used by Matthew, where the agreement is either with that evangelist alone or with him in connection with the rest. On the other hand, Luke appears to have occupied himself rather with the priestly lineage and characters of the Lord.
For although in his own way he carries the descent back to David, what he has followed is not the royal pedigree, but the line of those who were not kings. That genealogy, too, he has brought to a point in Nathan, the son of David, which person likewise was no king. It is not thus, however, with Matthew, for in tracing the lineage along through Solomon the king, he has pursued with strict regularity the succession of the other kings, and in enumerating these, he has also conserved that mystical number of which we shall speak hereafter.